Good afternoon, everybody. Give me one second. I know. Um, I have two very brief things uh, off the top, and then um, we're happy to dive right into your questions. Uh, today, at the Summit on the Responsible Use of Artificial Intelligence in the Military Domain, which is being held at The Hague, Under Secretary for Arms Control and International Security, Ambassador Bonnie Jenkins, on behalf of the U.S., announced a political declaration on the responsible use of AI and autonomy. The aim of the declaration is to respond to rapid advancements in technology by beginning a process of building international consensus around responsible behavior and to guide states' development and deployment and use of military AI. We applaud our Dutch and Korean hosts for convening the summit, which provided us the opportunity to discuss responsible military use of artificial intelligence in the military domain. This conference provided an opportunity to highlight the importance of developing a common understanding around the benefits and risks of using AI for national security purposes, and we encourage other states to join us in building an international consensus around the principles we articulated in our political declaration. And lastly, the United States welcomes the appointment of Darreen Richun as the new Prime Minister of the Republic of Moldova. We look forward to working with the Prime Minister and his cabinet as they continue to pursue political and economic and anti-corruption reforms. The U.S. firmly supports Moldova's sovereignty and territorial integrity, democracy, and prosperity. We appreciate President Sandu's continued leadership as Moldova builds its democratic European future. Uh, and with that, Matt. Uh, Thank you. Um, so I, I don't have a lot of hope that you're going to have any uh, <laughs> any information to offer on this, but uh, following the president's remarks just now, uh, two brief questions. One is that uh, he said he was directing the Secretary of State to consult with counterparts around the world to come up with some kind of global standard for balloons, uh, surveillance or weather or whatever type. Um, can you extrapolate, can you offer any more detail on that? My understanding was that this, these kinds of talks have been going on for, for years now. Well, uh, uh, first, Matt, uh, I, I, we all saw the, the president's comments, and I, I know the secretary is, is looking forward to and eager uh, to working with his counterparts to help uh, develop and uh, work on some of these standards as it relates to um, uh, maneuverable and non-maneuverable objects, whether they be uh, balloons or otherwise. Uh, I don't have any specific updates to, to offer uh, uh, this on. Is not a, this is not some kind of a new initiative. This is pretty much carrying on from, you know, debates that have been going on in Geneva and, and elsewhere about vertical limits of national sovereignty and that kind of thing. I, I don't believe it's intended to be the for, to, for the discovery of new policy or anything like that. And then the second thing is that he said, that the president said that he would be uh, hoped to or expected to be talking to uh, President Xi. Um, is it your understanding, is it this building's understanding that rescheduling the Secretary's trip to Beijing would require uh, another conversation between the pre President Biden and President Xi? Uh, or, I or could he just take off to, you know, my visa is still good for... <laughs> A week or so. Uh, I, I, I don't want uh, to speculate on the, the sequencing, Matt. Um, uh, the secretary was pretty clear. He, he looks forward and intends to uh, continue on with his uh, visit to yeah, China when think, conditions but it, allow. But is, it, but is it possible that he, he, he would go without there, that he would reschedule and go without there being a, a leader to leader? Uh, I just don't don't want to don't want to speculate. I I think broadly over the course of this uh, these past couple of weeks, we have uh, maintained uh, channels of open communication with uh, the Chinese. Uh, obviously, the secretary uh, had the opportunity to speak with uh, uh, Wang Yi, and uh, others have been uh, engaging at a working level. But uh, whether uh, the two leaders will speak 
prior to any potential visit. I just, uh, I'm not going to speculate. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, John? Sure. Uh, could I go to the Israeli Palestinian issue? Sure. Sure. Two questions on this one. On China? Yeah. On this, this, this very topic. Sure. Uh, just, I was hoping we could backtrack a little bit. So last week you said that uh, you are aware of Chinese plan to spy on 40 countries. So one week in, no country has been forthcoming so far. I was wondering if on your end privately, you experience a different traffic. Are the countries approaching to you? Uh, are you in the midst of con any consultations with them? Well, Alex, I'm, I'm not. I'm just not going to uh, speak for other countries. But if you uh, look to just public commentary, that um, some of the foreign dignitaries that we've hosted uh, in this building over the past uh, couple of weeks, when they've asked about, been asked about the high altitude uh, surveillance asset that was found uh, discovered over the United States, rather, um, they uh, there has been convergence on on the United States approach and uh, our our handling of the of the situation. Um, and of course, a big part of this is our close consultation with our allies and partners in the robust uh, engagements uh, and dialogues that have taken place um, in the days and weeks afterwards. But I, I'm not going to uh, get anything beyond that. Hey, and back to Matt's question, the president used the phrase common global norms. Uh, so we're at the zero level at this point, or there have been? norms just certainly, to certainly I don't think that's what the the, the president was was trying to insinuate uh, obviously there have been and are um, standards and protocols and policies in place as it uh, uh, relates to the air and aviation whether it's uh, manned unmanned uh, or otherwise uh, but uh, it's clear that uh, and the president alluded to this that uh, given uh, the heightened sensitivity and uh, our um, discovery of these things three additional uh, objects that uh, there is more uh, for us to discuss uh, with our allies and partners with countries around the world uh, as it relates to these things. And so the secretary looks forward to doing that. Thank you. We go back to the, yeah, these issue. Uh, the, um, at the UN, as, as you probably know, there's a draft resolution that would call on Israel to immediately and completely cease settlement activities. The administration, the State Department has been critical of the latest settlement moves. Uh, does the US have a stance on, on this resolution? Thanks, Sean. Uh, we remain focused on supporting the conditions necessary to advance the prospects for a negotiated two-state solution between the Israelis and Palestinians, which uh, is our belief is the only path to a sustainable end to the conflict, and we continue to engage uh, with all parties on this. Uh, the introduction of this resolution uh, is unhelpful in supporting the conditions necessary to advance negotiations for a two-state solution. We are uh, aware of the introduction, and we're coordinating closely with uh, our partners in New York on, on, on next steps. Uh, when you say unhelpful, um, does that mean that the U.S. is ready to veto it? Is it looking to, to change it before it gets to that point or not be introduced at all? Uh, I, I'm not going to get ahead of the process, Sean. We uh, are coordinating closely with our partners in New York and uh, are assessing our next steps. But uh, when I say uh, that it is unhelpful, we have been clear as it relates to uh, both the uh, Israelis um, and the Palestinians. And you saw us be very uh, clear about our stance on this uh, uh, after the events of Sunday on Monday. Uh, from this podium uh, about the uh, about actions, including um, settlement activity that uh, could undermine uh, a two-state solution and also further incite tensions. These are the kinds of things uh, that would do the opposite of that. If, can, I just, can I just take one, one more step? Quickly? One more, Sean, and then... Uh, sorry, just, just quickly, just, if I could just take one more step at that, uh, on, on the veto possibility. If, if it does come, is, is the veto an option? Is that something that, that the U.S. is willing to do to not have to see the light of day? Sean, I'm just not going to uh, speculate or, or hypothesize on, 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 on or get ahead of the process here. I think uh, what I will reiterate is that uh, our view is that the introduction of this uh, resolution was unhelpful uh, in supporting the conditions necessary to advance uh, negotiations of a two-state solution, uh, just like we believe that the uh, news out of Israel on Sunday uh, was unhelpful and something that would further incite tensions as well. And uh, our viewpoint has always been that both sides uh, should avoid taking steps uh, that puts us further away from a two-state solution and uh, further incites tensions, which uh, these are the kinds of actions uh, that do that. Um, let me do Saeed, then I'll come to you, Simon. 
Uh, are you on the same topic, Simon? Yeah. Uh, I'll defer to you, and I'll, I'll take. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Just to, to drill down on on what you're saying is unhelpful. I mean, if you look at the the, the wording that's that's been reported uh, from this draft text, uh, it seems to be things that you agree with. So, what exactly is unhelpful about a resolution that you know condemns something that you condemn and restates things that you also agree with? Regarding the occupy, occupy, occupation of, the, of those territories. So, what exactly is unhelpful about about this? Simon, we have been uh, fairly consistent in uh, over the course of this administration that the we don't view the UN as the most um, uh, practical or useful forum for uh, for discussing this issue, uh, and that this is something that uh, the two sides. Uh, need to discuss and engage uh, and negotiate and work on among themselves uh, and that steps like settlement activity, steps like the introduction of, of such a resolution are unhelpful and put uh, us further away from uh, a negotiated two-state solution, which has been our consistent viewpoint uh, in, in, in where uh, we would like this to end. And um, you, you're still, your position is still, or the administration's position uh, is still that, you know, with regard to, as it was with regard to Russia in the last year, that, uh, you know, vetoes in the, in the Security Council should be used uh, sparingly as possible. Uh, I don't have any new new policy to announce or, uh, or a new uh, uh, strategic assessment to offer on our approach to the UN Security Council, if, if that's what you're asking. Said. Thank you for that. I, I think I'm going to belabor the issue of the effort of the UN, you know. Uh, I mean, I don't understand. Israel was founded by the United Nations. It ought to be obligated to what the United Nations dictate. In this case, you know, a record of UN resolution was calling for it to stop settlements, to end the occupation, to start treating Palestinians inhumanely, and so on. I mean, I have uh, the UN Security Council number 2334, the last time uh, an, issue, uh, an issue like this came up uh, in the Security Council where, you know, the United States abstained and uh, hence the resolution passed. I suspect that the resolution on on Monday will be pretty much the same thing. Why, why wouldn't the United States, you know, uh, at least, uh, you know, abstain like they did the last time? Said, so I'm just... I, mean, I, I know you don't to, to, I mean, it jumped the gun and so on, but... Yeah. Said, so we're uh, we first of all, I, I'm not going to get ahead of the process and the texts that both you and Simon were referring to, they are draft texts. Uh, but broadly, we have been very clear uh, about our our views on this. And to I will say two things: is that the United States is committed to achieving a comprehensive and lasting peace between the Israelis and Palestinians, and we continue to believe that uh, the two-state solution is the best way for Israelis and Palestinians to preserve, uh, realize, uh, and uh, their national aspirations. Uh, and to be clear, Ned, the Secretary, uh, our allies and partners, countries around the world were very clear uh, about our opinion as it relates to the, the news from Sunday. Uh, we view the expansion of uh, settlements as an obstacle to that peace, as an obstacle to that two-state solution. We view that as an action that undermines a two-state solution. Uh, similarly, we believe that also that the introduction of this resolution is unhelpful in supporting the conditions necessary for a two-state solution, for the two sides to come to a, a negotiated solution. And as I said, we're working closely with our partners in New York to determine our appropriate next steps. I mean, I understand, but how you put muscle or you put some strength or, you know, or some leverage behind your opinion. I mean, you know, you have a very clear opinion on the issue of settlement and so on, but uh, the United States has historically fallen short of you know, making its opinion materialized or felt by, by the Israelis. So, I mean, you know, is, is the United States exploring ways and means to effectuate its opinion? Uh, Said, we, uh, our opinion is one that we have made clear uh, publicly, but it's also one that we have made clear privately. Uh, the secretary has uh, done so uh, through his counterparts, so has Ambassador Nides and others uh, working on this issue as well. 
Well, you know what? Uh, senators like Senator Chris uh, Murphy from Connecticut, um, uh, they issued a statement, very strong statement. So you are likely to find a lot of support if you were ever, ever to take you know, action that can you know, uh, show Israel that this may be costly, correct? Said, uh, I, I, I'm not going to uh, uh, contextualize or parse the, the words of the senator. I will defer to him and his staff. But we've made our view very clear. And we view the expansion of settlements as an obstacle to peace. And we view it as something that undermines uh, the viability of a two-state solution. Let me ask you one last question. The Knesset just passed you know, by a huge majority, like 94, uh, a new law that would actually um, deport or take away the citizenship uh, of those who commit acts of terrorism or violence against Israelis and so on, and physically deport them. So, you know, there's an element of ethnic cleansing or relocation uh, of population. Are you aware of this, uh, first of all, and second, do you have an opinion on it? Look, let me... Let that me... fall under the, the you know, the... the the definition or designation of collective punishment. L let me say a couple of things on this side. First, uh, I saw the, the reporting on this this morning. We understand that the law was passed in this Knesset, um, and we're working to gather more information uh, and understand the, the implications of the law. I don't want to um, uh, offer an interpretation of that from here, uh, as uh, our teams are still uh, uh, assessing it from a policy standpoint. But uh, broadly, Said, we have been clear that the practice of paying Palestinian prisoners who committed acts of terrorism against Israelis is abhorrent, and we continue to engage the Palestinian Authority to end this practice, which both uh, our, our partners in Congress and uh, this administration we clearly oppose. But taking it out on the families of those who commit such acts, that would be a collective punishment, correct? S Said, I'm just not going to offer an interpretation on, on this that is still being worked out through policy right. channels. I'm sorry, but do you see any difference between an action that one side takes that changes the reality on the ground and an action that the other side might take that is basically just a statement, words on paper, rhetoric that doesn't, that doesn't actually do anything? Because when you say you're making what sounds like you're, you're, you're making in an, uh, you're saying that <clears throat> the Israeli settlement decision uh, and the legalization of outposts was unhelpful. But that actually changes the reality on the ground. A UN Security Council resolution is, it is what it is, but you know, there have been, <laughs> there have been so many UN Security Council resolutions. How many does North Korea agree with? How many does Israel agree with? How many, or do they follow? How many does Russia agree with? How many does Burma agree with? Right? It doesn't actually do anything. So I'm not sure I understand how you uh, say that, the, that, that they're the same. How can you oppose something that you, that, that you just agreed to no. with five other countries in a statement the other day and put out a very critical statement about um, on your own uh, just a, a day or two before that. Matt, I, I certainly am not, nor have we tried to make the case that they are the same. Uh, they are not. What I am saying, saying though, they're both unhelpful. They are. I don't they see are. how. I don't see how. He, well, explain to me how a UN Security Council resolution is as unhelpful as <clears throat> the Israelis expanding. The settlements and legalizing what had been illegal outposts. I, I'm not going to put a metric on this, Matt, but we have been very clear. Well, I'm that, not, that's probably a good thing I'm, because I don't think you can. I, I am not saying anything new or trying to represent I, that, a new position of this and administration. That may be the problem here. Uh, we have because been, you're not you're be, because it, it, it you know I, I I find it difficult to believe that you guys think that that, that the two are. Equatable that, that that they're the that that they're equivalent. Matt. One is literally taking land away, and the other is a piece of paper. The the point that I ha have been trying to make, and the point that Ned has made earlier this week, and others across this administration have been made making, is that any step 
uh, that puts us further away from a negotiated two-state solution, any step that further incites tensions, any step that makes a two-state solution more difficult and less viable, we would uh, take issue with, and we have uh, issue with these Which steps. Step we are not the, saying takes you further away from. I, that I am not going to put a metric on it, Matt. But it, I am not trying to say that everything is the same or anything like that. That's not well. That. But but that's exactly what that's exactly what's going on here. That, you're saying that you 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 oppose the I don't understand what the difference is between saying that you you are har harshly critical you deeply uh, what was it deeply troubled by the Israeli settlement announcement um, but you didn't do anything about it other than say that you were deeply troubled about it and now when the opposite side comes and says that uh, basically they want to say the same thing that that you said but at the UN you're opposed to it. We have been very clear, though, Matt, that well, we do not believe not that the, the we've been very clear very that clear. the UN is uh, that we don't feel that the UN is the appropriate. Right, so it's okay for you guys to say it on your own, and you guys and the French and the Italians and and, and whoever else signed on to that joint statement the other day. That's okay. What, but it's not okay for the UN Security what Council. What you to saw do? that statement say, Matt, uh, uh, including the one that we put out from the secretary, as well as the one that was signed by allies and partners, is a further reiteration of what I'm saying, which is that actions that will undermine a negotiated two-state solution uh, are unhelpful and not welcome right okay. now. I'm uh, looking for your prediction of, as to the vote and the Security Council on this, because you know what? Several of the countries that signed on to that joint statement with you will vote in favor of a resolution such as the one that has been, except for you guys. I, I'm just not going to get ahead of the process here, Matt. Um, I, I don't have anything else to offer on this. Uh, anything else on this uh, topic before uh, we move away? All right, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I have a follow-up question on the Chinese balloon. Sure. Today, President Biden talked about the importance of maintaining open lines of communication between U.S. and China mm -hmm. regarding this Chinese surveillance balloon issue. So now, are you confident in resuming communication between U.S. and China at the high official level, including Blinken and Wang Yi? Uh, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any um, uh, specific calls to preview or any uh, additions to the schedule to offer. We have been pretty clear from the beginning about our desire to keep uh, uh, channels of communications open with the PRC. Uh, that has been the case. Um, uh, for the for for quite some time now, uh, and uh, we look forward to continuing to to engage on this. But I don't I don't have any specific calls to read out. Okay. Um. And on Tuesday, State Department issued a readout after the meeting between Deputy Secretary Sherman and Japanese Vice Minister Molly, and it said that Chinese surveillance balloon flew over both Japan and the U.S. Do you have any additional comment on Chinese balloon which well, flew over Japan? I would uh, I I would let uh, the, I would let the Japanese uh, uh, and our counterparts there speak to their own um, airspace, but um, I would actually point you to as well to the uh, press availability that uh, Deputy Secretary Sherman held. Um, with her counterparts from the Republic of Korea and Japan, where they um, spoke uh, a great deal about uh, the the PRC's uh, activities in the region and the impacts that they have um, in the region and the, the impact on our, our shared trilateral view of a free and open Indo-Pacific. Alex. Thanks, ma'am. We'll, we'll move to Secretary uh, Trip. Uh, before that, uh, Ukraine ahead of Secretary's trip uh, urged Turkey and the UN to stop Russia from um, obstructing grain deal. I was wondering if this deal overall will be a subject to the Secretary's talks in Turkey. Well, uh, uh, Alex, we have uh, uh, not held back when it comes to how helpful and fruitful we have found the Black Sea Grain Initiative deal to be uh, in ensuring that grain uh, gets to the places that it needs to go. Uh, it has been uh, so immensely helpful. But let's be incredibly clear about one thing. Um, it should not have been necessary in the first place. This is a result of Russia's uh, uh, decision to try and uh, weaponize grain and weaponize food. Uh, and so uh, I, I don't want to get ahead of his trip, but uh, yes, I, I am sure that uh, the the benefits of the Black Sea Grain Initiative and the uh, desire and need uh, to keep it alive is, is something uh, that will be um, uh, of topic, not just 
uh, in his upcoming bilateral engagements, but I'm sure also uh, at the Munich Security Conference as well. Thank you. And regarding Munich, uh, mm -hmm. I know you mentioned yesterday you don't want to talk about bilateral meetings, uh, but several countries, Iran and Russia, will be represented by opposition leaders. Uh, as you know, this is the first time Russia, Putin's Russia, will not be invited at a state level. Uh, may I get your reaction to, first of all, Russia not being invited? Secondly, is the plan to meet with any of either Iranian or Russian leaders, opposition leaders? Uh, let me say first, speaking to the schedule, I don't have uh, any scheduling announcements to preview or, or, or get into. Uh, about the participation of the Russian Federation, I think uh, the organizers of the Munich Security Conference uh, were very clear. Um, uh, these are you know, our words, not theirs, but they essentially alluded to the fact that it uh, can't be uh, business as usual, given uh, uh, Russia's ongoing unjust and illegal uh, war uh, against uh, Ukraine's uh, territorial integrity and sovereignty. Thank you. And last on the Caucasus, uh, is the Caucasus negotiator, uh, Mr. Bono, is he uh, joining the Secretary's trip in May? Uh, I'm not sure uh, uh, about his specific travels, but broadly, Alex, uh, I, I think I've said this almost every time you've been in the briefing room, that uh, uh, peace in the uh, in the South Caucasus is, is uh, something that this administration, we continue to work on. It's something that uh, the secretary himself is is, is quite focused on as well. Um, and so we welcome any efforts uh, that will help us get to a, a, a durable peace, but I don't have any travel or anything to preview. He has been in office for more than two weeks. Is there anything that is preventing him from going to a region? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not. Sh I don't want to speak to any travel. Uh, there's certainly no barrier. Um, but uh, I will let. Uh, we'll uh, announce travel when we have it. Sean, uh, go ahead. Dif sure. Different topic. Sure. Uh, the Chagos Islands. Uh, Human Rights Watch issued a report, I believe it was yesterday, saying that uh, the UK government and as well as the US government are, are possibly guilty of crimes against humanity for the forcible displacement of Chagosians. Um, is there any reaction to that in particular? Human Rights Watch calling for uh, more formal compensation to deported Chagosians. Give me one second, Sean. So, Sean, we are uh, aware of uh, the report from uh, Human Rights Watch concerning the treatment of uh, Chagoans in the uh, 1960s and 1970s. Uh, the, the U.S. Uh, remains steadfast in its respect for and the promotion of human rights and fundamental freedoms of individuals around the world and acknowledges the challenges faced by Chagosian communities in a manner of which uh, the Chagosians were removed is regrettable, and we welcome the advocacy of Human Rights Watch to promote uh, respect for human rights globally. As far as the crimes against humanity issue, you're not going to go there? Uh, I just don't have uh, anything else to offer, but I will just note that we appreciate the UK's efforts to improve the livelihood of Chagosians uh, wherever they live, including its commitment to an approximately 40 million uh, uh, pound support package in 2016. And over the years, the UK has provided educational and community support and revised nationality laws while assisting uh, Chagosians pursuing British citizenship and opportunities to build a future in the UK. Um, I'm going to work the room today, and I'll come back to you, I promise. Shannon? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to double back one more time to the objects, actually, that were shot down out of the sky over American airspace after the Chinese surveillance balloon. We heard from the president today something that we've heard from other officials, but basically that from the intelligence community, its assessments, it seems most likely that these are, in fact, harmless aircraft. Is there any concern within the State Department that taking action that critics have described as, you know, shooting first and asking questions later to take down these objects might undercut uh, the U.S. claims about the, or the U.S. assessment of the Chinese surveillance program, or perhaps give um, per, uh, added boost to Beijing's claims that these, uh, that uh, the U.S. is overreacting? 
Well, uh, I think the president was pretty clear um, in his comments that, uh, and if you're speaking about the three uh, objects over the past uh, about week and a half, he was uh, uh, clear that the current uh, U.S. assessment is um, that these are not linked to uh, a PRC surveillance program. Uh, I don't have a different uh, ass uh, assessment to offer from the State Department, uh, but also you saw the president uh, speak about uh, both these objects and the first uh, uh, high altitude surveillance asset that was linked um, uh, to China, that uh, when it comes to uh, protecting our national security, uh, uh, this administration isn't going to hesitate to take action. And so um, uh, I, I will uh, let the uh, DOD and our colleagues at the Pentagon speak to any specific operational updates on, on, on the, the recovery of these, these items. Said. Yeah. Uh, Ukraine. Sure. Related. Uh, today, the Israeli foreign minister uh, met with President Zelensky and met with his counter counterpart, and Israel said that they will support Ukraine next week in, in the General Assembly, uh, you know, uh, and so on. And they said that they will supply uh, Ukraine with humanitarian and also civil defense systems, whatever that that is. Uh, are, do you have any comment on that? Are, have the Israelis now moved? maybe closer to your position uh, regarding Ukraine, or you think that they remain where they were? Said, um, uh, when it comes to the specific kind of support that uh, any country uh, th will provision to our Ukrainian partners, whether it be security assistance, humanitarian assistance, or otherwise, these are decisions that um, independent countries will take uh, uh, in their own accord uh, through their own government mechanisms. Um, so I will, uh, I will, I will, I don't have anything different to say than what we've said previously is that we, of course, welcome any country uh, supporting. Uh, our Ukrainian partners uh, in their uh, defense against this uh, unjust uh, provocation and invasion of their territorial integrity and sovereignty. Okay. Dylan, go ahead. Yeah, uh, immigration related question. Um, earlier this week, the premier of Quebec uh, called out uh, the mayor of New York, Eric Adams, complaint that he was busting migrants that had entered the U.S. illegally to the border with Canada and basically was trying to you know, funnel them into Canada illegally um, and said this is unacceptable. Um, I'm just wondering, are you aware of this uh, complaint? Have you talked to the mayor's office about it? Is it something that's come up when you've uh, talked with uh, your Canadian partners about immigration issues recently? Uh, I am not uh, aware of this and uh, to my knowledge uh, have not had State Department uh, engagements with the uh, City of New York on this, but broadly, Dylan, uh, as it relates to the status of uh, migrants who are in the United States that are currently going through immigration proceedings or uh, have their proceedings yet to be scheduled, um, the, the coordination and the um, management of all that would be happening through the Department of Homeland Security, so I will uh, refer you to speaking to them if they can offer any updates on this. All right. Oh, sure. Go ahead, John. Get you for one more since, yeah. uh, since you seem eager for uh, and, um, Nicaragua, I know it's been something asked before. Uh -huh. Nicaragua has uh, revoked citizenship of more yeah. um, of its of its dissidents overseas. Um, I know you've reacted in, to just things similar to this in, in the past, but, but is there is there a sense that this is more of a trend? Is the, does it affect the relationship with Nicaragua and any potential hopes of a thaw? Well, uh, the, the the big thing here, Sean, is that this act is inconsistent with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which provides that everyone has a right to nationality, and we condemn the Nicaraguan government's move to strip the nationality of another 94 citizens. Uh, this regime also reportedly ordered the seizure of their property in Nicaragua. Uh, this is a deplorable act, and it's another step backward for the Nicaraguan people and their hopes of keeping uh, uh, living in the democracy that they deserve. Um, uh, we remain steadfast in encouraging additional steps by the government of Nicaragua to restore civil liberties, especially in the light of their uh, unilateral decision to uh, release the 222 political prisoners um, early last week or late the week before. Uh, this move that you just described is a is a step in the in the opposite direction. Okay, and you don't see any <clears throat> Saeed's question earlier about the Israeli deportation law? 
Matt, Saeed's question so was... You just, uh, so, so you draw a distinction between revoking someone's nationality and, 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 and deporting them. Right? Saeed, uh, and with Matt... That, and with that... I, well, okay. Matt. I, I have a little bit more hair than Saeed does, but... Uh, <laughs> A little bit. I, I, I can tell bit. the two of you apart. I just want to be very clear. You were you referenced side in your question. So, uh, Sean was asking specifically no, 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 about I, a specific I know, incident. But I'm, I'm talking about nationalities, and you say, and, and, and I want to know if that applies to, like, you know, deportations. Of, uh, Saeed's people. question was or about. Revoking nationalities or revoking passports. Like, let's get into, uh, you know, Edward Snowden. Uh, if we're going to do that. Matt, Saeed's question was uh, specifically about a law that just passed and that I said that we are looking into the implications of that law. Uh, Sean's question was about a specific situation that the government of uh, Nicaragua took. These are a little, little different. <laughs> They're both government actions. I, I understand, and I, I, I okay. said that as it relates to Saeed's question, we're seeking to gather more information about its uh, tangible implications. If you don't mind. We didn't sure, cover Alex. Iran. Uh, you know, the statement came out this morning, uh, GCC and the U.S. joint statement. Give us a bit of significance of that. Also, what are you going to do about it, about Iran's regional dysfunctional role? which is outlined in the statement perfectly well. Sure. Uh, so first, I, I would refer you to the joint statement, which goes into a little bit of further detail. But uh, the U.S. and GCC partners discussed uh, the full range of challenges posed by Iran and Iran's threat to regional security and stability. Uh, they issued this joint statement condemning Iran's continued destabilizing policies, including its support for terrorism, its use of advanced missiles, its use of cyber weapons, uh, its unmanned aircraft systems and their proliferation of them in the region and around the world. And this U.S. GCC working group is the latest example in our close coordination with our uh, partners in the region uh, in uh, tackling the uh, challenge posed by uh, Iran head on. Any, any action you might want to preview? Uh, Alex, you've been covering the State Department long enough to know that uh, we're uh, never get into the habit of previewing actions. But uh, it, as you also are quite aware, that when it comes to holding the Iranian regime accountable uh, for its human rights abuses against its own people, for its malign and destabilizing actions in the region and around the world, uh, the United States has not hesitated to act, uh, and it's uh, not hesitated to coordinate and act uh, together with our allies and partners as well. Thank you. Thank you.